Hey guys, this is Terry Red here, and in this video, and maybe more than one, I'm not sure yet, uh, we're going to be talking about Goff Links effects, what it is, and how it works, and how you're going to use it. Uh, so, for me to get into that, I really have to kind of explain the basic of what DOF is, and how it works with like Visual Pinball and Future Pinball, and how Goff Links effects is different than that. Because I don't want people getting mixed up and thinking they can do more than what this is actually meant to do. So basically, uh, for DOF, if you guys don't know what DOF is, uh, DOF is a program that is the in-between of your visual pinball or future pinball table or pinball FX3. It's the in-between software that communicates with your cabinet's hardware and lighting. So for example, like all the RGB lights, your, your beacon up top, your strobes, the addressable LED, ma uh, LED matrixes, uh, your under cab lighting, your feedback, like your shaker solenoids, all that direct output framework or DUF as we like to call it, uh, is the software that makes that happen. So your pinball game for visual pinball or future pinball has DUF commands added to the table script. So it's actually in the game code. The game will then communicate uh, it'll basically, when it loads up, it'll open up a session with DUF, and then it will tell DUF, hey, DUF, I want you to turn on that solenoid, or I want you to set that shaker off, or I want you to turn on that light for this number of seconds. That's what DUF does. So Visual Pinball and Future Pinball can directly support that. So, uh, like, for example, this is Visual Pinball. This is a, a DUF uh, I did for... Uh, 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 Masters of the Universe on Visual Pinball version. So all the addressable LEDs, the lighting, the beacon, even the pinup player uh, stuff was, you know, all that was controlled using DUF commands. Okay? So... So the game itself is controlling that. Same with Future Pinball, but it works in a similar manner, but because Future Pinball is a more restrictive, we have to use DOF links to communicate with DUF. So Future Pinball's table script, the code, communicates with DOF links, telling DOF links, hey, tell DUF to turn this light on or set that shaker off or do this animated effect. And uh, you know, same, same idea. You can, you can see, uh, you know, it's the same kind of addressable LEDs, the lights, you know, feedback, everything else. It's all it works in a similar uh, manner. The game... So the game in both those instances and in Pinball FX3 controls it. All right? That's not what DOF Links Effects is. DOF Links, its native function, basically DOF Links can, can, can uh, communicate with Future Pinball and, uh, you know, uh, Pinball FX3 to some extent. That's what it was, you know, that's, that's its big features that everyone wants it for. But its original function was to basically allow you to push a key or a button and then tell DOF, hey, turn on that light, turn on that feedback or whatever. No control from the game. Just you push a button and it does something. Or when you load a game up, it will do something. That's the basic native function of DOF Links. So DOF Links Effects is going to use that. And we're going to do that for any game. The big difference here is you would have to have every game added to DUF config tool to make that work on a game per game basis. And that's just crazy. Here's the UF config tool. If you go on here, see all these tables? These are Visual Pinball, Future Pinball, and Pinball FX3 tables. All right? Here's all the toys in a cabinet on the left. And these are all the commands and parameters for each of them. You can have dozens, if not hundreds, just for one single toy, one solenoid, one light, whatever. And for you guys to look at the stuff, do you understand what any of this is? No, you, th these numbers mean nothing to you guys. So it's impossible for you guys to, one, make use of a configuration that's already on here for a game that you have no information on. Or two, we're not going to add you know, hundreds of games just for simple button pushes to create some simple but cool effects. We're not going to do that. So what, Do what uh, DOFLINKS effects is, it's basically one big configuration on here, a huge configuration on here that I created. 
It's think of it as one single game configuration. Uh, where are we here? Uh, Dio. There we are. So I created this huge configuration with hundreds of effects, and I've also created configurations for every single major toy that you would ever want to use. The idea here is that you could then, when you run any game with DOF links, you could tell it, hey, DOF links, use this one configuration. And then I want to use specific effects with specific buttons. And this can be changed on a game-per-game -game basis. We do that with sub I, &I files, but we'll get into more of that later. But that's the basic main focus here. I made this huge ROM with hundreds of my addressable LED animations that you see on other games and videos, ready to go for you guys to use for any game you want for simple but cool stuff. All right? And... Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll explain what you're seeing here. So this is this is a pinup popper, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Afterburner in MAME, okay? So when I do that, we basically have to tell DOF links, hey, DOF links, use this SUP INI configuration file for this particular game. So how we do that is... I'll show you on Pinup Popper, and this is actually my cabinet I'm communicating with. Uh, the screen you're seeing is not my, uh, this is my normal main PC, but Pinup Popper allows you to communicate and control everything over the network. It's awesome. So if I go to my emulator settings for MAME, okay, so here's MAME and my launch setup. So here's the launch script. This is what happens before the game gets launched. So on this line here, right here, Actually, a few of these lines. What I'm doing is I'm changing to where I have uh, DOF links installed. And then I'm telling it DOF links message. That's a, pro that's a program that communicates with DOF links. You can send messages to it. I'm saying, hey, DOF links, use this SUP INI configuration file located in the main subfolder. And it's going to use whatever your game name is. So, you know, in this case, it's going to be the Afterburner ROM name basically uh it, so that's that's basically all you need to do is add that to your front end now in this case it's pin a popper pinball x or other ones you you'll have to do the similar command but you may have to change uh, the game name portion to make it work or however you guys do it on those front ends uh and that's it like that's all we got to do for that and it's ready to go on our front end so every time the front end launches a game through mame in this this example that i'm using It'll send that message and uh, use that configuration file. All right, so now it's it's told DOF links, use that configuration file for this particular game. And now you can see what's going on here is this is the startup effect part of that configuration. It shows the addressable LEDs uh, animating. And it's also initiated and loaded a pup pack. Now I made a simple one, you know, because you can control pinup player and DOF from DOF links. All right, so you saw there, what I did was I pushed the coin button. The coin button turned off those other effects, turned on this effect and made the beacon and strobes go off for a second there. And the shaker motor went off for a second as well. All right, so I pushed the start button and then it turned off those effects in the back, makes this begin uh, word flash for a few seconds. And it's also making the start video play. All right, so what you're seeing here is you can see the effects going on. All that's going on is for certain buttons, they will trigger certain effects. Uh, so on the left side here, you see the yellow machine gun effects. On both sides, you'll see this afterburner sort of blast effect with uh, you know the, the engines on the back there. And uh, you're also seeing as well, uh, videos getting uh, triggered. All that's happening is I push a button, it reacts. The game has no control whatsoever if the game was over and i pushed a button it would still do the same thing so you need to understand that's what we're doing here that's the limitation of how how this works 
there is no direct control or communication with the game. And see, you'll see some missile uh, smoke effects going on on the right side here as well. And it'll uh, play some, uh, you know, videos to match as well. There you go. You see the nice little sort of like a little missile trail effect going on here. And same thing with uh, uh, with uh, Stargate here. So you can see, same idea. When uh, Stargate got loaded up, it loaded a different configuration file for DOF links. And now you can see the star field going off on the startup sequence. And then now I pushed the coin button, made the beacon go off, the strobes go off, and it turns off the stars, and it's making this effect go off. Now, the cool thing is you could have two different actions for every button press. You can have a push down, and there we go, same idea as we had before. If you push the button down, you can have it trigger whatever you want for DOF and DOF, or, and uh, pinup player. And then when you release the button, you could have another effect or uh, video or anything you want. You could have an effect turned on, an effect turned off, or an effect pulse on both a push down and a release. Tons of combinations you can do, and that's how I'm making all this stuff work with simple button pushes. Nothing else. And there you see, for the fire button, I just have a nice little blast effect on the back. And then for the smart bomb, you're going to see a nice little explosion. And there you go. Again, simple button pushes, but I mean, look at it. How cool is that? And also, you might see the undercab lighting uh, flash as well to match uh, with the color uh, when I push buttons. And there you go. I, uh, when I uh, hit the hyperspace button, uh, it did a beacon effect, and the beacon went off for a few seconds. And then there you go. When I push the Invisio button, it then does sort of like a, a particle type effect all around. And and when and then when you exit the game and go back to your front end, Dolph Links goes to goes to sleep and is no longer being used, and it closes out pinup player and it closes out your uh, DUF session and it goes back to normal for any other game again. So that's it. It's you know that's the basics of how it's working. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not going to go too too deep into it because uh, it, it's just important that you guys know how it's working. I don't want people thinking that, oh my God, I'm just going to be able to install something here and then every main game is going to work or every PC game is going to work. No, 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 no. All I did was I put the framework in for you guys for all the effects and I created a tool, a, a, a spreadsheet that will help create all your configurations without you guys having to know how to program any effects at all. That's That was my objective here. Give you guys all the effects to use, tons of them in lots of colors, and make a tool that will be easy for you to arrange it all and make it nice and easy. So uh, that's this part of the video. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't want to go uh, through the whole process because it's, it's kind of a long process to create this stuff uh, at first until you learn it, but then it's quick and easy after that. So uh, yeah, so... That's it for this video. Uh, for the next video, I want you guys to basically uh, take a look at the uh, DOF Links Effects SUP INI Creator Sheet. And uh, I'm going to explain how that works, what everything is, what it means, where the files go, and everything you need to do. So uh, yeah, so uh, tune in for, the, for that one, and uh, maybe you'll be able to make some very cool stuff. And the great thing about this is when you've created a, a sheet, or an INI file, you can upload it for others to use and they can use it or change it as needed. So there you go. Uh, see you in the next video, guys.